This video is sponsored by D's Silky Scrub. D's Silky Scrub. And you know, I know you're gonna say, well, Larry, you're a tough guy. Why are you doing something like this? I'll tell you what, it makes my elbows really smooth. I never thought I would use anything like this. In fact, look at this. They got two kinds of types that I'm sending out for Christmas gifts. What a great gift. And you can get uh, $5 off every single job by using the promo code friends and family. Just put friends and family, you get $5 off. This is the real deal. What a gift. Check it out. Now, I'm going to get into these movies. You know, when I watch movies, I don't watch it like a regular person. I watch movies a little bit differently. I'm always analyzing it. I can't get it out of my head. And I just do that. I don't know why that is. It's just part of who I am. Uh, but we're going to look at these. And the, uh, some of these movie things are a little bit off. But some are pretty good, too. So let's go to the first one. Logan Lucky. Right off the bat, when I saw those toilets and stuff and going up there, uh, I don't think I ever remember having drop ceilings in prison in anywhere. Uh, maybe in an office up front or something like that, but you don't see drop ceilings in anything in the, in, in the compound, they call it. You will see things to the walls and stuff like that, but usually it's going to be a hole uh, where the pipes come through that. In that one, there wouldn't be any just hole. There's nothing in there to be a hole. Look at that right now. I want you to look at that picture. There's nothing behind that. Now, there would be something open behind the water part, but obviously not behind this part. I mean, it could be a little open because there's a little back to it. But it's not going to be like it's this perfect squared out spot. And even if it is so, you think you're going to be able to get it off like that? It's probably going to be screwed in there with those screws that you can't unscrew. Unless you have a special tool for that. Now it is obviously they left from the medical department and then they're just going through the backs like it's nothing and they're coming out a, a, a little door and they're going to kick it open. That's not happening at ease either. You know, you think it's just, you know, you're in concrete. They don't make things like they do at a house in a, you know, like a regular person's house. That's going to have concrete fasteners into that concrete. If you think you can just blast that open, got another thing coming. Now, obviously, they're putting up a basket underneath, and you'll see why for a second here, but you think there's just fasteners there? Where did you make that? Did you make it in the shop? And what is it being made for? Uh, things are really controlled in prison. It's, it, I don't know. Some of the movies make like you can get any tool you want and stuff. Now they have tools, but they're checked out. They're monitored by a, a, what they call a CMS worker. And when you're doing your work, you're being monitored. So it's not like I can just take this tool back to my cell. Well, you know, I remember when we we made a hole in a behind the shower and we made a hole about this thing, but we all had blisters because we took nail clippers, little nail clippers, and made a little handle on it and we're chipping away at the concrete and it took us months because we'd go in there for a shower. We had a guy take those things off from CMS. Now there's only pipes coming out and we would take it and go around it. And all we were doing that is to make a hole so we could have put a bag in there and make wine, make prison wine. So it wasn't for getting escaping out now. Don't get me wrong, believe me, I'm sure everybody was thinking about escaping, especially at ATL. You see, they came from, I guess, the CMS, the medical behind the prison, and they come into the exit gate. It's also called the Sally Port. When they come into these sally ports or exit gates, this is what they do. They go underneath with mirrors. It's on wheels. Usually they roll them, as you can see. And they want to make sure not, nobody is under there. 
or you didn't put something on there. And they even use that in, in, in police stations for bombs now and everything else. Uh, but obviously for people's in prison. All right, so they get out. I get it. Possible. I love the ingenuity of the movie. Let's move on. Escape plan with Sylvester Stallone. Any break requires three things. Knowing the layout, understanding the routine, and help from outside or in. He's exactly right. You need help from the outside, you need the plan, and you need the weaknesses. You know, I always just sat and wondered why some of the, the mega, mega crazy guys I knew, mob bosses and drug kingpins and whatnot didn't, you know, with multiple life sentences, didn't get a helicopter. I did have a way to figure it out. I got to write it on a paper and show you guys. But I think, I really do think I could have got out. In Ben Waters' case, it's the secure housing unit. The government expenditure was $17 million building that facility. You hear that? The secure housing unit. The whole. That's what the secure housing unit said. It's taken to the shoe. It's state of the art. The only problem is, it's located next to an unsecured fire garage. Now that wouldn't happen. There's nothing inside that building or next to that building that you can get to in prison without being inside the main double fences. So you're not going to go out there and hit, uh, you know, get into one area and get to another area and be in a free area. Obviously, this is a movie. First, I needed to get inside, so I made some enemies. Once inside, it was obvious you were short-staffed. Federal guidelines recommend two guards are present when transferring high-risk inmates. That is true. Whenever you leave your cell, when, when you're a high-risk inmate, which I was, you always have to two guards. They don't do two guards. When they take you to the yard or somewhere, it's one guard behind the back. But they do cuff you up no matter where you go. When you're in the shoe or the hole, every time you leave that cell, no matter what, I have to be handcuffed behind your, behind your back. Not leg ironed, but they put your hands through the food chute. They open that shot and they say, turn around, cuff up, Lawton. You'd go put your hands through the chute, click, click, click. Then they'd say, step away from the door, open the door, pull you out. That's where you know how you can bake them easy because one, they don't double, uh, double lock them. And I showed you on a previous uh, video how to get out of handcuffs. Just go back into my playlist and you'll see that video. And I actually get out of handcuffs. With a, with a paper clip. Knowing the guard's routine was the next step. 30 seconds into my rec time, my CO took a smoke break. For seven minutes every day, there were no eyes on me. Now, it seems like he's in some kind of hole there area where he's sitting in the middle and they're monitoring. Uh, yes, they have the cages, yes, they have the holes, but I, I've never seen something like this. Uh, I, I don't get that one. Because he did say federal prison. After I knew the routine, this caught me right away, and I want to stop it here. Look at the pencil. That's the exact pencils I used to write motions on. I used to write legal work with those pencils. And you see how our little pencils, you know how you sharpen it? Well, I showed you how we steal a razor blade out of uh, the shaving, and we'd use that. Or you, you go on the side of the concrete wall. You actually can get it down on the concrete wall, and you get a good point. Uh, and that's how you get the wood off that. And I would have that thing to a nub that you could barely, your fingers would hurt. But that's exactly what it is, golf course pencils. See, the cartons contain a thin layer of wax laminate. Lay it over the keypad, the impression will indicate which four keys were pressed. This thing about the carton, yes, you used to make uh, fire with those things. We used to boil water with those cartons. There is that film. But you're going to see the part that I really, and, and to take that off like that would, I mean, listen, I used to do tedious work in prison, you know, make rope out of underwear. It would take me eight hours to make a rope, but I had made a rope that can hang you. Now, do you see the way they uh, was on his knees, uncuffing his legs? That doesn't happen. You do that when you get into the box or the shoe, and that's it. Even, you don't even go there. When you're inside the compound and you're on the yard, very rarely do you see people in leg irons as well. Uh, when they get transferred out of prison, yes, but usually you're in R&D. You go from there into a holding cell and then they come, they shake you down, they, they search five times and the whole works. I just needed to get to the keypad. Okay, that don't happen. 
That was a straight. When they close that chute and lock that thing, a, a handle comes up. It's like a lock, and it wouldn't be able to come up out of that, that thing. And you think the guard's just going to push it closed? Doesn't happen that way. Uh, if that broke, they'd have to log it in when it broke and everything else. So I get that part. But the way I would have did is what they call a uh, hijack the chute door. I mean, guys would be crazy. They'd put their arms right through the door. Some guards would slam the fucking door on your arm. Almost break your arm. Uh, Massey talked about that. But they called it jacking the chute, meaning you're holding the chute open to piss the guards off. And then they don't want those open because not escaping because you throw shit at them. You throw food at them. You know, you go crazy in the hole. All right, he got that four code thing, whatever, how many times. You know, if you give someone four numbers and you tell them to figure it out, do you know how hard that would be? Do you know how many combinations, a lot of combinations with four numbers? At no time is nobody in the control room. At no time. They do not leave that control room unattended. So he's checking out the monitors, doing all that kind of stuff. Not in any federal penitentiary I was in. Any federal prison for that matter. Now how did he get that screw off that quick? Here's again, power tools? Where are you getting those power tools? Another one. They don't make vents that you could fit in anymore. Any prison that's even somewhat 50 years old, 30 years old, whatever it is, they don't make vents that you could fit a human being like that through. That's not happening. And believe me, I used to open them, try to do stuff. And those grates in the hole are concreted to the wall. No screws open to those grates. They're literally concreted to the wall. So that, that, that's not happening. Before you know it, I'm right where I want to be. Just in time to catch my ride. Good movie, unrealistic. Not even can, close to can happen. Uh, they're not gonna have the firehouse. I told you all the stuff in that one, but it's a good movie. Next one, Grand Budapest Hotel. This one was comical. Let's blow. Obviously, this is set in probably the World War II era. I guess they have their whole dog already and how they get into this tunnel, I don't know. And where the tunnel comes from, but okay, let's go with that. Now they're going to the kitchen. Come out of a dumb waiter, that's called. See it? Dumb waiter. You know, you'd see them at old hotel buildings and stuff like that, and they would actually be able to pass uh, tools, clothes, anything up and down, food in the dumb waiter. And little people. <laughs> Now again, I uh, assuming these guys were, uh, I don't know how prisoners are in a hotel, that's what it said, because there was a ladder right there, that's not happening. How'd you get out there? Shut the fuck up. These guys are trying to escape. What's wrong with you, you goddamn snitch? God, God, no! Oh. That made me smile, because I was in Atlanta uh, when people from uh, the, the lower levels were in what they call the transfer center. Uh, uh, they had a hold over in Atlanta, and they, had, and they had a yard, inside yard, but you could see down onto our yard, the actual prisoner's yard. It was right near the handball courts in Atlanta. And uh, people, someone was trying to escape, but people said, he's escaping, he's escaping. Like, we're fucking jerk offs. I like that part, because that guy grabbed them and said, you snitch, and the other guy, Killed them for him, so uh, that was a pretty good part of that, uh, this clip. Guy goes like this. Do you think for one second 
Look at this. They're going over or under their bunks. Watch this next one. Do you think that could happen and nobody get up? This is even more funny. Look at them. They're cutting those. Now, let me tell you how you can cut them. Uh, dental floss can eventually go through, a, through that. Believe it or not, it can. Old, rusted out crap is crap. But let me tell you something. Whether they got hacksaws or not, who, nobody's hearing this. This become comical to me after watching it. They all got it at the same time. You know, a lot of these movies could be a lot more realistic. They really could, and still be good. That was kind of funny. Look at all the stuff and where did they get that material to make that ladder? That wasn't a ladder going five feet, seven feet. That was a ladder going 35 feet or whatever. Good evening. You know, that was kind of a funny part. Uh, they, all of these old time movies, like, you know, I, I still watch Hogan's Heroes. I don't know if anybody watches Hogan's Heroes. In Hogan's Heroes, they, they, they get out of the prison, they have a, a tree stump. You know, like it's cut down, they have two of them and they come. It's kind of like that. These old movies make me laugh like that. But it was a good, you know, fun scene. How did Kumar escape from Guantanamo Bay? This is a comedy. Look at this. This opened up wild, huh? The guard is trying to make these two inmates, I guess, suck his dick. Obviously, that's gonna happen. What the fuck is he doing? High voltage, keep away. <laughs> you see that wire there on the right and left of the B? It's called Constantino wire. That shit is like razor blades. That will fuck your world up. And I watched a person fall into that. In, in, in the prisons I was in that didn't have a wall, they had two fences. And in between them is all of this wire, so you can't walk in between that. And also on the top of the fences. I, you know, that's no joke. Shit, that shit will fuck you up. You just go to America? Si, vamos. Si, vamos. Come on. Yes, come on. Telling you, Jorge, the first thing you have to do when you get to America, buy a device called TiVo. Now, this kind of got me a little bit uh, smiling. One, because I was on the Freedom Flotilla uh, in 1981 when the Cubans came here from uh, Mari Mariel. So, Guantanamo Bay is, is Cuba, and it is in, it's at the end of the island. America still has a piece of that. I don't know how long they leased it for. I also got a kick at this because out of all the years I've been doing that, and I and it was many, 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 I never seen anybody in a life preserver like this guy. And the boat kind of looked like it was like a car. I don't know why they'd have that, just make the raft. But they had the car there. So it's kind of cool. Next movie. The next three days. This is a pretty cool movie because one, I love Russell Crowe. Great actor. Yeah, yeah, we're here. Now, do you see they have the two? Uh, they'll always have two guards with you, or sometimes even three. Or they'll even have a lieutenant and two guards, uh, sometimes, uh, transporting inmates, as, depending on the classification and everything else. They know their records, they know everything about them. I mean, it's not something they just say, hey, get in the car, let's go. Nah, that doesn't happen. Prisoners secure, no problems. We'll do. That's where I can see him. John. And the phone. I mean, it's pretty easy. They would have a guy at the door, number one. Not anybody walking on him, obviously. In this case, uh, they did, and he just pulled in with a gun and take over. I'm Dr. Leveson. You've got a patient here from County Jail, Lara Brennan. All right, there's an escape out of a hospital. Obviously, the prison, the, you know, but believe it or not, every time I've been to an outside hospital in prison, I've been there a few times. You'd be surprised how nice the people are, the doctors and the nurses. They know we get abused, and they really do treat you nice. Now, a lot of people say, why wouldn't you just hide somewhere? Well, whenever you try anything you do, whether it's a crime, a robbery, or whatever, get as far away from that place as you can. That's the number one rule. Not hide in, you know. People say, oh, just hide in an apartment building. 
You want to get the fuck out of there with all the people snitching and everything else, you're going to get caught. And that's not snitching, I always say, but you're going to get caught. There's too many eyes on you. I did like them blending into the crowd. Always, I, I always say, doing something that to make you stand out is what you don't want to do, even in a robbery. That's why I pulled in straight or pulled in whatever way the people did in front of the, the store, if I had to use that exit. These criminals know everything. They know the subway system, they know where to get off and on, the cops know where to jump. You think any cop I know would ever jump into the middle of the subway in New York City like that on a whim? There's what they call the third rail there. You touch that third rail and you're grounded. You are fucking fried. End of story. Next movie. The Fate of the Furious. Whoa. Me and you, one on one. No one else around. Look at the fucking size of, uh, of Dwayne Johnson, The Rock. You know, I love when people say, Larry, you look like The Rock. I am not The Rock. <laughs> this fucking dude is The Rock. I said no, Mr. Nobody. I'm not leaving this cell. I'll get out my way. The right way. Well, if they're just sending the whole prison in alarms just for this one guy because he won't get it, that's pretty badass. Uh, obviously, that wouldn't happen. Just a malfunction. I've been in prison with automatic doors, usually the newest county jail, something like that. Federal prisons are turnkey, unless there's new ones I don't know about. Literally turnkey, guards gotta go on turnkey. And they do that, it's called turnkey. Guard, that's why they carry a big, big, uh, you know, big keychain. He's fucking some people up, man. But great, I mean, look at this, this is some great shit. Now, wait a minute, that one was a little out, boy. He heads butt a guy with a helmet. Let's, let's stop the bullshit there. I know it's a movie, but I love the throw, I love stuff. And believe it or not, I look at shit like that and then I just chuckle if I'm in a movie theater. Cause you know, I'm always looking at things like that. It's crazy, right? Last one, life it's called. I think I got a plan. This is kind of funny. I'm a visionary on this. You got all worked out, huh? I think I really do. It's an old time prisoners is what this one. Where they have bunk houses and stuff like that. And But look what they do. They put it on fire. You know, this is just, just think about that. You're putting yourself on fire. How many people could be locked in somewhere? This is the plan. It's a good plan if you really want to think about it. Going to a burning building. Oh. Did you cry? Oh, no, I got allergies. I'm cool. Oh, my God, man. Hey. Ain't nothing wrong with a man crying every now and again. You know, when he said that, guys, that's the truth. I've done it myself many times. Uh, watch a bunch of killers and, 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 and gangsters sitting in a room watching a show and crying. Not a fucking peep. Nobody says shit. What was Claude's plan anyway? The Claude figured he could steal a couple of bodies from the morgue, right? That way, when he set the infirmary on fire, and all the commotion, him and Ray could just slip right on to them fire engines, see? Hide out, wait until the morning, and roll right on out with them, see? <laughs> that way, when they find the two bodies, they think it was them. Well, what makes you think that ain't work? Hmm. I never said it didn't work. <laughs> Didn't say it didn't work. I got a kick out of this. I hope you got a kick out of my movie reviews uh, telling you what doesn't work and what does work. But anyway, guys, have a great day. Please stay safe. Don't do anything to go to prison. Watch them on TV. I love all the suggestions coming in uh, of things to do, and believe me, they're on a list. You know, I try to stay uh, very uh, active with the community because I want to hear and what, what you guys care about. Please check out all the stuff below. Check out that nice product of the, uh, 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 the, the the skin stuff. Wow, I'm telling you, it's cool shit. And also, please make good choices, and I'll see you next time.
and make sure you comment. Have a great day, everybody.